Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is one that I'm doing that I consider be, to be of quite great significance. Now I'm a bit late to the party because this Netflix episode or series called American Factory has been out for a while now, but I only saw it tonight and I thought I'd offer some of my own commentary and opinions on it. It begins optimistically highlighting that there's been a downturn in the plant closure of GM in Ohio. And in comes a Chinese glass manufacturing company that sees opportunity. And they come in and purchase the plant and refit it to become a glass manufacturing facility. And they come in and they hire a lot of American workers. There's optimism. One of the early questions on in the, in the story is about whether or not there will be a union movement within the Fuyao Glass Company. And it is stated early on that there would not be. And that follows the theme throughout the book, or sorry, throughout the series and the documentary. And it's very interesting because it tells two tales, one side of China, one side of America. And the picture painted of the Americans, I think they tried to do a good effort of, they tried to put in a good effort to show Americans in a good light. But the Chinese are very critical. They say in one instance that Americans are lazy and they have, have fat fingers. They're not as efficient as the Chinese workers. And by the looks of a lot of the American workers, that it appears to be true. A lot of them are overweight, they are elderly, and perhaps not as quick-moving as their Chinese counterparts. So the big debate in the documentary is between unions versus the employer. Is the employer just out for greed? Just out for money? Are they trying to rip off the em employee? That is the narrative that is spun by the unions, of course. Now, I was quite disappointed as an American to see such behavior from the union leaders because in my view, I get frustrated and I think that workers should be able to represent themselves without the threat of strike. But the other side of it is those employees were not showing the proper initiative to justify an increased wage. Yet, the Chinese employer did give them a $2 raise at that time to try to boost morale and try to encourage the employees. The Chinese company Fu Yao brought in a labor industrial relations firm to try to dissuade the employees from voting for a labor, or sorry, a union representation at the plant. And long story short, there was a big debate back and forth. There was the union who was saying yes, the employer who was saying no, and they put it to a vote and about 60% of the workforce said no. They did not want a labor um, they didn't want any labor to be unionized. Now, to me, this represents an, a wonderful opportunity. When you've seen the contrasting extremes of the American story versus the Chinese story, the Chinese are very much flat stick, 100%. They work for weeks on end, 12-hour days. They rarely see their families. That's a story that's told from their side. But the story told on the side of the Americans is of eight-hour shifts and very little work, very little productivity. And you'll see in the video here, that's the uh, chairman of the Fuya Glass Group. He's the one in charge of it all. He's the one who's made the investment. And we have contrasting extremes. We have fat, lazy American workers, and we have thin, run-ragged employees in China. Now, what I'm going to propose tonight, I tonight is a compromise. The great compromise between the American way, as it is currently, and the Chinese way. In terms of hours, what does that look like? I would encourage the Americans to put in a 10-hour day. Meet in the middle. Move from an 8-hour day to a 10-hour day. And for the Chinese, move from a 12-hour day to a 10-hour day. Find a better work-life balance for the Chinese. But for the Americans, more work, more labor, more output, less unions. The labor movement had its place in history and in time, but 
at almost every turn, I see disrupting productivity, disrupting people, creating a separation between employer and employee that does not lead to productivity. And I think we should stop perpetuating the myth that everything is about exploiting the worker, which is one thing that Bernie Sanders is promoting. So the documentary raises a lot of questions, talks about the contrast between the Chinese way of life versus the American way of life. And the Chinese very much want to change the face or the impression that Americans have of Chinese people, Chinese workers, Chinese culture. But the differences are quite stark. And I imagine that, and I hope that, in time, the relationship will grow stronger between Chinese and Americans, and that we might learn from each other, because I think there is a lot that they can learn from one another. And as I said, they are people at ex two extremes. Americans in general, fat and lazy. The Chinese, thin and run ragged. Let us meet in the middle. Let us find a better balance for both people, both groups. That is what I would suggest. Another point that was made was a Chinese shop floor supervisor or manager was talking about how automation was going to replace four workers, that it was easier to employ a robot and they would be able to get rid of, say, four, four workers. Now, that is the future. That is the future of work. A lot of things are going to be changing. A lot of things are going to be changing in the future. So what do we do about it? Well, I think Americans need to get into gear and get behind the message that Donald Trump has been saying as well. To reinvigorate the people. To inspire them. To light a f fire under them. To see what is possible for, for people in the future. Anyway, that's my opinions on that. I'd love to hear what you think about the Netflix documentary series or the Netflix documentary American Factory. How it is changing. Will things be better with this? Will we see a better contrast? Will we see a more balanced situation? We have the Chinese culture versus the American culture. What is the potential there? I think the potential is great if we work together, if we can harmonize, if we can communicate. That's very important. And if there's anything that American workers need or might consider, one thing that I would consider is the story of China. China has gotten to where it is today because of the influence of the United States. Deng Xiaoping, who was the previous chairman, or one of the previous chairmen, went to America and could see the manufacturing there. They could see what the power of U.S. manufacturing was. They could see it. For many years, China had quotas. They had caps on the number of things that people could produce and companies could produce. But learning from the U.S. model, they uh, removed those quotas or kept the quotas but allowed the Chinese companies to produce whatever they wanted beyond that, that, that amount. And what happened was an unleashing of economic productivity and potential that has changed China forever. That was off the backs of learning how Americans do things by opening up, by engaging, by talking, by communicating. China was changed and influenced by the United States. And now I see it coming around again. You have Chinese coming into America and say, this is how we do things. We have learned from you, and this is a better way of doing it. And there should be some reciprocity there, and there can be. Now, I might be accused of being a China lover, and maybe I am, because I've had influences in people that I've met from China that I appreciate a lot. But I think there is room for improvement on the American side, and there's room for improvement on the Chinese side as well. We can meet in the middle. It's possible. Anyway, I'd like to hear what you think. Let's learn from each other. Let's grow. Let's develop. And do it together. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you soon.